Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Prosthodontics on Friday, which explains implant prosthodontic steps and its side effects in a very easy and interesting way. I am Dr. Joy No, MC of Prosthodontics on Friday. Today, I'm going to talk about space of partially edentulous area and the number of implants to be placed. This lecture is going to be presented by Dr. Park jung of Sosanduri Dental Clinic. Thank you for appearing on the Prosthodontics on Friday to provide an excellent lecture. Before we begin, could you please provide a brief explanation? Today, I'm going to talk about whether it's right to place the same number of implants as the missing teeth. There's also variation in space. In determining how many implants to place, this is the kind of concern that all dentists have, and I have been pondering it a lot about this. I have thought long and hard as well. I look forward to your lecture today. To those of you watching the program from the dental site, on the right, you can use the chat screen to ask real time. Please feel free to raise your questions and these will be addressed in the Q&A session. To those of you participating in the chat today, Starbucks coffee coupon has been prepared. Participate in the real chat and try your luck at winning the coffee coupons. I look forward to your keen interest. Now let us begin Dr. Park's lecture. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park jong of Seosan Duri Dental Clinic. I would first like to express my gratitude to Professor Cho for always greeting me with a big smile and to Dental TV for inviting me to Prosthodontics on Friday. The contents, it's very simple. One, two, three, four, five missing cases. So let's look at single missing tooth. More so than the distance from the CJ or from the bone, I focus on the height of contour first because I need to consider prosthetic restorations as well. I try to prep the adjacent teeth as much as possible and if it is less than 6 mm, I recommend the orthodontic assisted treatment and recommend bridge and up to 11 mm, I place one implant. I believe that if a molar has been extracted, most people would agree to place one implant. Nine years ago, a different dental clinic placed this implant. There was a problem and a small diameter fixture was fractured. The reason for fracture is complicated, but I am pessimistic about splinting fixture level screw type prosthesis. It's difficult to get a passive fit. I don't believe placing two implants were issue. It's as a 4.5 wide neck fixture was placed once again. Final prosthesis was complete. One implant was sufficient for function. The distance between height of contour if it is below 11 mm, I place only one implant. This is the recent case. The MD width of height of contour was the biggest, and it is between 11.1 .1 to 12.9 mm. You have to consider various options. I placed one implant in 11.5 mm space. In the case of anterior, upper, and central incisor, in most cases, MD space is sufficient. However, in the case of lateral incisor, things become more complicated. I make an attempt if the distance between height of contour is over 6 mm. In the case of 5.9 mm, I forgo bone level implant placement. As you can see, you cannot make abutment thinner than this. 
Even if you make it like this, it is very difficult to place implant in a 6mm space. If the mesiodistal distance of height of contour is not 6mm, you can place one body fixture, but this is not an easy choice. In the case of lower anterior, I normally place MS implant, and if you look at the image, if the maximum height of contour is over 3, you can place the MS implant. However, considering the variation, I attempted in the case where height of contour is over 5 millimeter. This is very tight. The CEJ is only 4.4. I adjusted the height of contour. It's approximately 4.8 millimeter. So you may ask, well, what if it is 4.9 millimeter? I would recommend the bridge. I wouldn't think too long about it. I adjusted the adjacent surface, however, I was only able to secure 4.8 millimeter of mesiodistal distance and I gave up implant and restored it with Maryland Bridge. Placing implant in such tight places can be very stressful and therefore if it is below 5 millimeter, I give up. So I start to attempt to implant to start from 5.0 millimeter. 5.0 millimeter is not sufficient. You may think that I don't think long and hard for each patient. However, I came up with this criteria after many trial and errors. Let's look at two missing cases. In general, if two teeth are missing, I would place two implants. When space is tight, it's a problem. I consider various options between 11.1 mm to 12.9 mm. If I am to place two 11 mm implant, I would choose MS implant. Number 43 and 44 were missing. I placed a two MS implant and temporization was provided. The biggest shortfall of MS implant is there's no other option than immediate restoration. If initial stability is weak, you cannot do some merging. I restored with two MS implant and I believe it was the right choice for such tight space. If the space between height of contour of adjacent teeth is 12 millimeter, you can consider placing two 3.5 diameter implants. 3.5 implant does have mechanical weakness, however, even if bone width is sufficient, if the mesiodistal space is tight, if you place 4.5 diameter, biologic problems can be caused. I believe more so than mechanical issues, biological issues are a bigger problem. I believe doing cantilever prosthesis is a good choice. Can I ask you a question? Yes. In this case, in the past, if molar was missing, if the space was sufficient, you would place two implants on mesial root and distal root, and if two molars were missing, you would consider tripodism and place three implants. Now, if you look here, if you place one implant for two missing molars, then lateral force can be applied. And issues such as bending moment can cause a screw loosening and cause issues with implant prosthesis. I am concerned about this. What are your thoughts on this? In the past, implant surface was not very good and implant splinting was recommended. In full arch implant, people recommended splinting on the entire prosthesis. However, with surface improvement, short implant and segmented prosthesis are becoming more of a trend. As you have mentioned, if you do cantilever prosthesis, mechanical weakness occurs. However, the likelihood of a problem increases so much more biologically if you place two implants in a tight space. Therefore, if you ask me which will cause more problem, I would say that biological issues will erupt more if you place more implants in tight spaces. And this is a bigger problem than problems related to mechanical weakness. As you have mentioned, if there's sufficient amount of space, say over 12 millimeter, you can place two. However, if there's insufficient space, Rather than placing implants too close to each other, having more of a legroom in terms of space is better for 
implant longevity. Is that correct? Yes, you have summarized it perfectly. Thank you. As implant transition from smooth surface to rough surface, implant has developed significantly and this has become possible. Is this correct? Yes. I didn't know how to summarize it, but you have done it wonderfully. Thank you. Please carry on with your lecture. Let's look at our next case. 24 and 25 had to be removed. However, the space was very tight. I think it's approximately 11 millimeter. I plan for cantilever bridge restoration. However, I was concerned about the periapical lesion and I decided to place it in the middle. This is not a bad option if you cannot do space distribution correctly and find the right path, yet there can be aesthetic problems. I changed the plan to place one implant in the middle, and as I was drilling, I made a mistake and I was not able to get sufficient initial stability. With 5.0 diameter implant and therefore wide type implant body was placed. In the middle of the custom abutment, in order to differentiate the tooth type, I made a groove and this was fabricated in the form of two premolars instead of one. This is not really aesthetic, however, this was an efficient restoration for the tight space. There is much less possibility of issue with placing one implant rather than two. If there are two missing teeth and the distance between the two adjacent height of contour is over 13 millimeters, I would just place two 4.0 diameter implants. I did space analysis where there was a sufficient space between adjacent teeth and fixture and embrasure was sufficiently secured. The MD distance was 13.5 millimeter. For long-term prognosis of prosthesis, embrasure needs to be this much at least. If it is approximately 15 to 16 millimeter, you can choose whatever diameter you prefer. You can choose 4.5 diameter as well. Even if you make a small mistake, if it is 15 or 16 millimeter, you can place it with ease of heart. This is a case where adjacent height of contour was 15 to 16 millimeter and CEJ uh, analysis was done. CEJ it's 17 millimeter, so it's quite a lot of space. The problem is prosthesis because you cannot drill beyond height of contour. It's not the problem of distance with implant and natural teeth. Therefore, the key is prosthodontic phase. This is an anterior case where there are two missing teeth. If there are two missing central incisor, I would place two implants without hesitation. However, if central incisor and lateral incisor are missing because of tight space, this can be a problem. For anterior, I like to use 3.5 diameter implant. Therefore, if the distance between adjacent height of contour is over 12 millimeter, I place two implants. For number 11, I thought I would place the implant more measly. However, due to the height of contour of adjacent tooth, it is not possible. This is a case where I placed two implants even though it was below 12 millimeter. If I had placed one implant, it would have been better. Even in the case of an anterior, if the distance with height of contour of adjacent teeth is over 12 millimeter, I prefer placing two implant rather than two unit cantilever bridge. Because I use small diameter implant for the anterior, 12 millimeter is okay even though it is 13 millimeter for the posterior. If the distance is less than 12 millimeter, I place one implant and do two unit cantilever bridge. Placing 4.0 diameter implant can be problematic. If you're going to place two, you can reduce the diameter and place 3.5 to reduce problems. However, I just placed one implant. I believe this was the correct choice. Even if the distance with the height of contour of adjacent teeth is over 12 millimeter, you can place one implant and do two unit cantilever bridge to avoid complicated bone graft. This has been well maintained for the last seven years. You can see discoloration of adjacent teeth. If the space is 12 millimeter, place two implants so that is more appropriate. Doing cantilever in the interior without giving it much thought, I think there could be problems. There was implant in number 13 and number 12 was lost additionally. 
Although it was a bit of a stretch, I placed it in the tight space. If you look at the abutment image, because of the height of contour and drill direction, I was not able to move more mesially. Yes, I could have done better. If the inter implant space is too close, I try to make the abutment as thin as possible to get more soft tissue space. Now let's look at lower anterior. Often it is very tight, so you need to think long and hard. Extraction of 31 and 32 was necessary and there was very limited space and adjacent teeth looks unstable. Cantilever was used for restoration. I thought this was a very good idea. Due to adjacent teeth, lesion occurred, and because there was distance with adjacent teeth, the implant was not affected. After endodontic treatment, the issue resolved. As shown in tight spaces, there's much less problem if you place one rather than placing two plants. Guide was used to place the two implants in this tight space. Guided implant placement was done. Because of the cortical bone on the mesial area, the implant slipped and the inter-implanted distance became too close. The guide design was very nice and the plan was good. However, because of my mistake, the distance between the implant became too close. As you can see, the implant to implant distance is too close. It is 1.3 millimeter. In order to make up for it, you need to secure soft tissue space. Therefore, retentive part of prosthesis was made vertical. For soft tissue, 2.5 mm space was secured. Immediate restoration was done. I thought long and hard to secure soft tissue space and therefore it is maintained. However, the distance between the implants are too close, so I would have rather placed a one implant and make cantilever. In the lower anterior, space is limited. Labiolingually, there's not a lot of bone width. A lot of people place MS. I believe most of the people use MS. MS is one body and diameter is thin. And therefore, the area for osteointegration is limited. As you use MS clinically, is there any difficulty that you have experienced? Did you experience any failure? Or did MS implant a fracture or any other problems? I really like MS implant. It is very unique and well designed and drill coordination is very well done. I honestly have never experienced any failure with MS implant. Up until recently, I talked about how I never experienced bone loss with MS implant. And at, right after I talked about this in a different program, I experienced bone loss. And at the time, I left a too little buckle bone and marginal bone loss occurred. If you look at this case, I was concerned about the bone cocktail on the superior area. Yes, I can see it's a very nice case using MS. I think I have asked my question too quickly. After three years, you can see that bone fill is made very nicely. MS implant is a very nice implant. Yes, I can see that there's a lot of bone fill. Thank you. Please carry on. Now I'm going to talk about three missing cases. I'm always divided as to whether to place three or two implants. And also, to do splinting or segmenting. For retrievability, I like to segment it into two and one when fabricating prosthesis. However, it is not easy to adjust the proximal surface between implants. The issue of loss not going in after cementing implant. Have you ever experienced it? It's an ongoing source of stress for me and it can be problematic. Therefore, at times, I just splint all three clinically because it's much easier. To avoid bone graft, I placed two implants and did three unit bridge. I don't believe there will be mechanical problems. This is a prosthesis where three units were splinted. This was done by another dental clinic. It is an ER type. I tried to take it out for modification, but it was not easy. 
In terms of maintenance, the splinting all three may clearly have some issues. Because the anterior area there's limited space, when there are three teeth missing, I only place two, and this is the principle. Placing three implants in limited space can be biologically and aesthetically unfavorable. Please remember that when there are three missing in the anterior area, only two implants should be placed. You need to be careful when you place in the central incisor area. I placed it without guide. The placement position is slightly wrong. It interferes with embrasure space. As a result, unesthetic result came to be. Please note that placing two implants in the central incisor area is very difficult and therefore guide should be used at all times. I can see that you have used cantilever in the anterior area. I believe that it's okay to use cantilever. However, in the posterior area, if you don't use bridge and if implants are placed on more on one side, if you do cantilever at that time, I believe there are many things that we need to be aware of. I believe you should avoid cantilever in the posterior area if possible. However, there are different options available. Maybe you don't want to place small diameter implant in the front, or maybe you don't want to wait for the extraction socket to heal for a long time. Some people use mesial cantilever or distal cantilever in those cases. However, you need to wait long in those cases as well. And even if you use different diameter implant, please try to avoid cantilever. If you need to use cantilever, I would use mesial cantilever. However, when you do this, the occlusion, it should not just be about one articulating paper sliding through. It should be clearly apart by about 0.5 millimeter. I don't use distal cantilever unless the antagonist is full denture. Our mouth, it has a leverage mechanism. Therefore, the more posterior you go, the stronger occlusal force becomes. I agree that mesial cantilever is better than distal cantilever. Thank you for such wonderful explanation. I believe we can move on now. Thank you. I will now carry on. Let's look at four missing cases. I hardly place four implants for four missing teeth. The reason is, as you adjust the distance between implant placement, the possibility of implant placement in number 8, which is difficult to maintain, goes up. If there are four missing in the posterior area, the placement path becomes slightly different, and if you splint everything, retrievability can become an issue. At first, it may be okay, but if you look at the cases with over five years, the soft tissue below ponic base it inevitably becomes resorbed. This is a very difficult problem and definitely something to think about. Placing two implants and posterior four missing case, it's mechanically possible. However, you need to consider hygienic type if cleansing is difficult and if there's a lot of bone loss, as shown on the right. Or you could consider making three large molars. The worst option is to splint everything and cement it, as shown here. Simple problems like ceramic fracture can be difficult to address in these types of prosthesis. Therefore, if possible, I make ER type. In the case of anterior, rather than placing three, I prefer placing only two. If the upper lip line is low, as shown here, I make prosthesis following gingival margin. Aesthetically, it can be very favorable. In the lateral incisor, if the bone width is insufficient, at times you may be a good choice to place it in the central incisor, but you need to use guide. If fixture is placed between embrasure, aesthetically it can be very unfavorable and there's no way to overcome it. In the case of lower anterior, I only place two. In four missing cases, I prefer using two MS implants the most. Because of insurance purposes, I have no choice but to use TS implant. However, two-piece abutments, there's limitation in reducing the size of abutment. And therefore, if the placement position interferes with embrasure, very unesthetic results can come to be. 
Finally, I'm going to talk about the five or more missing cases. If there are more than five teeth missing, I placed four implants and I tried to segment it into two. However, as shown, the bone condition is almost always bad. Most of the time, you struggle to place it where the bone is. As shown, there's limited bone width and vertical residual bone. I did rich splitting to increase vertical and horizontal bone amount and did bone graft and in the back, I placed a 6mm implant and you can see that it's quite close to the inferior alveolar nerve. People with over 5 teeth missing, in most cases, they don't really have good bone condition. Splinting them all in terms of maintenance can be unfavorable. However, if there are more than 5 missing, placing 4 implants and segmenting into 2 was not possible in most cases in posterior area. Ridge splitting was done and buccal bone was secured and even though it's close to inferior alveolar nerve, it's maintained stably. Anterior side, it's a different story. I'm going to talk about six anterior cases. Mostly three implants are planned. As shown in the bottom, if you place two implants in the central incisal area, there's high probability of aesthetic failure as it can invade the embrasure space. On the anterior side, you don't want to do a lot of cantilever because it needs to be in charge of interior movement. I tried to place one more on canine on each side and central incisal area. So three implants. Functionally, there's no major issue in long span prosthesis, however, it is difficult to maintain. If additional tooth is lost, it would be wise to segment it. Lower anterior, the bone quality is good and anterior cantilever is not much, so I try to place two implants only. Compared with upper, the mesiodistal distance is short and cantilever amount is limited and therefore two implants would suffice. If, as shown, there's no teeth up until premolar, I try to limit the necessity of increasing cantilever by placing three implants. As shown here, MSRBM surface implant has very good bone response. In the case of lower four anteriors, I would place MSRBM surface implant. I really love this product. Let's summarize. If the space is approximately 6 to 11 millimeter, I would place only one implant. In two missing cases, I would think long and hard if the distance is 11.1 to 12.9 millimeter. From 12 millimeter to 12.9 millimeter, I would normally place two 3.5 diameter implants because I don't like a cantilever, but I keep this option in mind as well. In the interior, if the height of contour distance is below 12 mm, rather than having implants being placed too close, I prefer a cantilever bridge. I try to avoid placing implant in the central incisal area because there can be difficulty with the aesthetics, and if necessary, I use guides so that correct placement can be done. To wrap up, between the distance of 11.1 mm and 12.9 mm, I think long and hard. And apart from this, I follow the criteria that has been defined and make the same choice for all patients. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the wonderful lecture, Dr. Park. Now we will end the lecture here and move on to real-time Q&A to address the questions that have been raised by the viewers. Dr. Park, let's look at the questions that have been raised. ID Coelho, I really like the topic today. Thank you. ID Dambia, if you place implants too close to each other, mechanically it may be okay, but what kind of biological problems could occur? That is the question. We learn from school that we need to distance the implant 3 millimeters at school. However, if you make abutment really thin, as I mentioned earlier, even if the implant to implant distance is not 3 millimeter, it can be maintained. If you can maintain and clean embrasure, 
And in order to do that, you can make the abutment really thin. It's not problematic. However, the problem is soft tissue sealing. If there is no soft tissue sealing, bone loss can occur and implant failure could occur as well. If you place it too close, cleansing becomes difficult, inflammation occurs. Surrounding bone may be resorbed. Such biologic problems can occur. There can be gingivitis. Due to that, there can be bone loss around the implant. I think that would answer the question. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Doctor, I love your tie. I think this person is complimenting you because I'm wearing the same the bow tie. I think the viewer was impressed with your bow tie. Peace, peace, Dr. Park. You're very cute when you talk. I've never heard that before. Thank you. Should I say orbit? Is that orbit? In number one and number two molar, if the residual bone is lacking, what do you think about placing in number eight? This is a very difficult question. I don't have good experience with ha having placed implant on number eight. If there's no residual bone, I at times use number eight, but at times, even if there's teeth, you remove it. And it's ironic that we place implant there. If you need to place it in number eight, you need to make sure that the patient can maintain it very well. Make supragingival margin and pay attention to the prosthesis contour. Have the patient come in frequently and check whether the cleaning is done properly. And we teach about hygiene management. Therefore, it is not recommended, but if you have to, you need to maintain it very well. If you have no other choice, well, that's it. Thank you. ID 1004, thank you for a kind explanation. ID Dr. Lee returned. This is my favorite program. Thank you. I look forward to your keen interest. There's another question here. Soul as Den looks like a name of a dental clinic. I'm curious about the criteria used for implant diameter when restoring posterior area with bridge. Premolar, molar, the posterior area. And what is the criteria for different spaces? These days, I try to use smaller diameter. Because of fracture, people try to increase the diameter. However, if you do that, there's more possibility of biologic problem because there's less residual bone. If you look at the case destruction, I prefer non-hex implants. If you do that, I don't have sufficient evidence, but based on the data and on my analysis, non-hex implant has better resistance against a fracture compared with hex implants. Therefore, I try to use only up to 4.5 in the posterior area. In the posterior area, I use SS in general. In anterior, I never place more than 4.0 even if there's a lot of bone. I try to use a lot of 3.5 and 4.0. In premolar, I think 4.0 would suffice. I believe use use smaller diameter than the conventional way because of biological reasons because I believe there's a higher possibility of biological problems compared with mechanical problems. And if you use non-hex implant, you can reduce the diameter. The Austin training book actually says 4.5 or 5.0 for the posterior area. And I believe this came to be because many doctors placed implants and experienced fractures or tears and the recommendation as a result is 4.5 and 
If you listen to other dentists, if you place a diameter 4.5, implant fracture problems can largely be avoided. I agree. 4.0, it might be risky. In the posterior area, I don't place that. I place 4.5. I believe there's reason why people recommend 4.5 and 5.0. Of course, if all conditions are very good, if there's bone width buccolingually, there will be no major problem. And if the bone width is narrow, you can place smaller diameter implant. Next, ID Yeonji Shi. If 33 and 34 exist, and the upper is natural dentition. When we provide pr fixed prosthesis, how many implants should I place? And where should I place them? There are two natural teeth, 33 and 34. If we're going to provide fixed prosthesis, how many implants should be placed? And where should it be placed? How many should be placed and where it should be placed in the case of ISRPD? 33 and 34 exist and the upper dentition is natural dentition. Upper is natural dentition and only number 33 and 34 exist. To do ISRPD, I personally believe that there needs to be balance between upper and lower. If the upper is natural dentition, I wouldn't do ISRPD in lower. If the patient has economic problems, I would consider it. However, I try to find the right balance. If 33 and 34 are the only existing teeth, I would consider the patient fully edentulous and place six at least. Two on the anterior and two on both sides of the posterior. I wouldn't recommend ISRPD to the patient. In those cases, you place one in number 35 and 37 and do bridge, or place three, 35, 36, and 37. You can also place just two, and on the other side, you can place implant in number 32 and 31 and do cantilever. I think it may vary depending on the bone amount. If we assume that we place in number 32, on the other side, where should I place it? I personally believe maybe 43. On the anterior side, I would just make one. I would place number 32 and 43 up to the canine and on the left, number 44. 44, 47 or depending on the natural dentition, you can do 44, 46, 47 or 44, 45 or 47. So I would at least place six more implants. If the patient doesn't have money and if the patient wants to do ISRPD, you need to make a symmetry on the other side. 33, 34, you need to consider the biological factors. In this case, it's difficult to do bridge, anterior bridge. This is implant and on the other side, it's natural dentition. There can be uh, problems, so you need to do it separately. It's class 1, division 1. On both sides, it will be free and on the anterior side, there can be edentulous part. You can make partial after that. In terms of ISRPD, I'm kind of conventional. If the antagonist is full denture, I would do it. If the balance is right, I use ISRPD only then. ISRPD is going to be addressed on November 28th on awesome meeting. There is going to be two lectures. One person is going to be actively supporting ISRPD, whereas the other person is going to take a more conservative approach. There's also going to be chair and there's going to be debate as well. It sounds interesting. On November 28th, Awesome Meeting Seoul is going to address this topic and I hope you show interest and you'll be able to glean a lot of good information from it. I hope this answered your question. Yeonji Shi below.
When you do ISRPD, can you use MS? I think it is narrow ridge. In narrow ridge, when you do ISRPD, can you also use MS? Using MS on ISRPD, is that possible? If the antagonist is full denture, that's possible. Really? I have two cases where I've done it, and it functions very nice. If the antagonist is full denture, I believe antagonist plays a crucial role in implant-assisted RPD. Using MS on ISRPD. You have experience. Yes, I have two cases. I do have my doubts. I really like MS implant. This is my favorite implant. Perhaps you can show us doing ISRPD using MS. If you can invite me, I'd be happy to. Awesome. As a private practitioner, I used to place as much as possible, and today's lecture made me embarrassed. How long do I have to study further to become like you? I believe this is a compliment towards Dr. Park. I'm not saying my principles are the very best. This may turn out to be false in the future, and I believe this can change at any moment. Placing many implants is not an issue. It's placing too close that's a problem. We need to avoid biological problem. Also, if the space is too wide, it can lead to mechanical problems. So, placing too little can also become an issue. I believe we have exhausted all the questions. Are there more questions? Okay, I see. If the space and bone condition is good, can we place as much as missing teeth? In the anterior side, I do not believe so. On the posterior side, that can be. Another point in terms of posterior area, if you wrongly manage space and place in number 8, I don't think that's favorable. In the case of molar, you can place as much as missing teeth. Conic base, with time, the space widens, so in posterior area, the number of implants should match missing teeth. Yes, in the anterior area, aesthetics is very important. If you place implants too close, aesthetically it can be challenging, and in the posterior area, we need to consider occlusal force as well. If there is space for implant placement, you should place it to address mechanical issues as well as biological issues. ID tomorrow is Saturday. What happens if natural tooth and implant is too close? Is there a solution? Next time, if possible, I would like to show you my case. And one time, there was only 0.5 millimeter with the natural tooth. And the key is how thin you can get the abutment to be how to secure soft tissue between implant and natural teeth how to secure soft tissue that is the key i believe there is limitation in two-piece abutment and if you want to secure more space i prefer rigid abutment one piece abutment or solid abutment i wish we could talk more but because of time constraint we will end q a session today thank you for the wonderful response Dr. Park. I would like to express my gratitude to viewers who have participated on Real Chat. There will be a lucky draw and coffee coupons will be sent individually. Dr. Park, is there a word of advice you'd like to give to the viewers who have stayed with us until late for optimum treatment? Please provide a word of advice. So I'm going to talk about one thing. I have said that I will place implant if it is 6 millimeter, but not 5.9 millimeter. And people have told me that that is too strict of a standard because there are so many different patients. But I have come to my principle after thinking about it long and hard and having gone through many trial and error. And I've heard other people's experiences as well. Creativity does not refer to something new or a sort of new attempt. 
Creativity stems from molding my opinion with different inputs and providing clinical treatment accordingly. I believe providing a standardized treatment for all my patients is important. Thank you. Thank you for coming all the way to prosthodontics on Friday from Seosan after ending your treatment early. Thank you once again for providing such a wonderful lecture. Thank you. Dear viewers, did you enjoy lecture from Dr. Park Jung-hyun? I hope you were able to get good information in terms of getting an idea as to how many implants and where they should be placed in partially edentulous patients. The questions that were not replied today will be addressed via replies. The next lecture is going to be provided by Professor Lee Jun Seok of Prosthodontics Department at Tangle University. He's going to talk about occlusal adjustment of implant prosthesis and correct way to do finishing. Thank you for staying with us up until late. Dr. Park, thank you for your hard effort.